Timothy chapter number 3. I'm thankful for the grace of God tonight, church, aren't you? I'm thankful for the power of God tonight, aren't you? 2 Timothy chapter number 3, beginning with verse number 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Turn to somebody and ask the question, are you built for the battle? <laughs> Come on, ask somebody that. Come on, I want to hear you talking. Are you built for the battle? All right? You may be seated. There's a lot of battles that I begin to do some research on. World War I, World War II, the American Civil War, the American Revolutionary War, the Vietnam War, the Korean War, the Gulf War, <laughs> the War of 1812, <laughs> the Cold War, the attack that was happened on Pearl Harbor, Seven Year War, the Spanish Civil War, War in Afghanistan, the Iraqi War, and the French Revolution. And there's many more that I just didn't want to talk about tonight because there was too many. But I'm here to tell you, we have never faced a war like we're facing spiritually. Now listen to me. Selfish, blasphemous people, covetous people, dishonoring parents, children dishonoring parents, boasters, ingratitude, proud, wicked, slanderers, despisers, treachery of all sorts, prideful, ple pleasure seekers, formalism, and that's just in the church. <laughs> the Word of God is very clear and getting clearer by the day. The world, friend, listen to me, the world is in chaos. There's economic crisis. <laughs> There's moral decay like we have never seen before. We're consumed with sports and entertainment. We're, we're consumed by political chaos. Whether you're Republican or Democrat doesn't matter to me. Listen, we're, we're caught up in all kinds of political turmoil. International, worldwide fear, war, and struggle. Are you built for the battle? It seems, according to CBS, <laughs> NBC, ABC, Fox, the Worldwide News, Wall Street the CNN, every television station, newspaper, magazines, and even on your Facebook, we ask the question, what in the world are we going to do? What in our state, in the state of Arkansas, are we going to do? What are we going to do even in Van Buren, Arkansas? What is our church going to do in this very crucial time? What is my family going to do with all the wars we're facing in families? What am I going to do with all the wars that the enemy tries to attack me with and I battle every day? Are we really living in the last days? Is the Lord Jesus really going to come? Is the church relevant today for what we're facing today? 
I'm here to tell you, I know I'm preaching to the ones that are very wise in this church. But honey, we're not facing the same things you face at my age when you were this age or even younger. We're not facing the same trials and temptations that you face. There's a new world out there that we're facing many difficult battles. It seems that the world stands in anxiety asking what's next. What's the next thing we're going to see on Fox News? What's next politically? Honey, we have never been so confused as we are politically than we are today. What's next internationally? What's going to happen next all across this planet? What's going to happen next financially that we have to deal with as people living today? What's next in our spiritual battles that we're going to face? You have to understand, in these days we're living in, you're going to face spiritual battles like you have never faced in your life before. There seems to be, there seems to be a general apostasy. Apostasy means the public, listen to me, the public abandoning of a religious faith, especially in Christianity and another's across the world. Does that simply mean that we're backsliding from the faith? Does it mean that people are abandoning the church? Does it mean that people are abandoning the Word of God like we should? Does it mean that we're abandoning the Lord Himself? We're giving up on spiritual things and on the Lord. Listen to me. Some will depart from the faith in the last days. Some will depart from the church in the last days. I'm talking about the church as a whole. Honey, just not the assemblies of God. I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ. Some will depart from this precious word that we have. Some will depart from their walk with the Lord as they used to walk with the Lord. You see, it's a sad time we're living in. Are you built for the battles that you're going to face in these troubled days. There are seducing spirits all around. There's doctrines of devils. Honey, you begin to look, if you would just get on and just begin to Google all the different kinds of churches in the world. The, one of the fastest growing churches now is the satanic church. Can you even imagine somebody joining the satanic church? But listen, that's the hour we're living in today. Are you built though? Are you personally built for the storms that you're going to face in your life? There are those who stray away from Christ and yet still want to be acquainted with Him. They were once alive and vibrant in their walk with God. They were once burning and passionate about their relationship with the Lord. Once in love and consumed by, with God and His Word and His church. But now they're cold, indifferent, they're beaten, they're hateful, they're bitter, and they're broken. We must get back to the basics of this book. We must just simply get back to the basis of salvation. Honey, I'm telling you, Jesus is still in the saving business tonight. Jesus is still in the delivering business tonight. We must get back to the basics of just remaining saved in this hour today. We must get back to the basics of knowing He has amazing grace that is greater than any sin in this world. We must get back to the basics of knowing He's a merciful God tonight. Listen, we must get back to the basics of this book to know you can still be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost and the evidence of speaking in other tongues. We must understand, we must get back to the basics. Are you, are you battle ready for the things that's going to happen? you got to get back to the healing power of this Lord Jesus Christ. You must get back to the delivering power of God in your own life. Listen, get back. Are you, are you prepared for the battle that you're going to face in this world today? We must, we must preach 
we must teach. We must study. We must memorize. We must love. We must love this precious Word of God. If you want to be built for the battles in life, honey, you better get this book inside of you. There are those... There are those who want to remove the sound doctrine of the Word of God. Some people want to remove their deep experience with God, with the Word of God. Some people want to remove the power of salvation in this Word of God. Some people want to remove about the baptism of the Holy Ghost in this Word. Some people want to remove the power of healing from this Word. Some people want to remove the power of holiness in this world. We don't like to talk about holiness, but I'm here to tell you, it's still the way of God is to be holy unto Him. We must break free from the things the enemy uses to destroy us. Listen, he's not worried. The enemy is not worried about the wretched sinner in this city. He's worried about those who are in this room tonight. Listen, thank God. Thank God for pastor preaching just even this past Sunday night and can't wait for the rest of it and teaching us just like it is to break free and the things that we deal with in this world. We're dealing today with issues that the world absolutely will blow your mind if you really knew what some people are dealing with in this world. That's what the enemy's going about to. He's going about his business to try to destroy your own spiritual walk with God. And he's trying to do his very best. But listen to me. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. We have the answer. Yes, his name is Jesus. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus has given us the directions to how we can make it in this world. I think some of you used to do this and used to just take it for granted. But I'm here to remind you tonight, when you open this book, this is my Bible. This is not just your Bible, honey. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. If it's says I'm a conqueror, then I'm a conqueror. If he says I'm victorious, then I am victorious. I have what it says I have. I'm here to tell you, if you need joy, this book tells you, you can have the joy. I can do what it says I can do because this book tells me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, not through First Assembly of God, not through the Assemblies of God. Honey, it's through this precious book. And it also says, when you hold that up, we used to hold up and we sometimes we took it for granted. Today, I will be taught this word of God. I boldly confess to this world that my mind is alert and my heart is receptive to what this book tells me. I will never be the same, honey, when you get in this book. Honey, I know I like coming to these altars. I like rejoicing and praying and praising and shouting and running and jumping. But honey, sometimes you have to understand that's just an emotionalism. I'm here to tell you, but you can stand on this book. You can't last a week just because you might have shouted Sunday night, honey, you better make sure you can shout on, su- on Monday morning and you can do it by the power of this book. You see, you're about to receive tonight the incorruptible, the indestructible, the infallible, the inerrant, ever using seed of the Word of God. Because why? When you find out what this book says, honey, in these days, you will never be the same again once you get a hold of this book. You can come down here and you can speak in tongues as you just lay out on the floor and pass out. But honey, unless you get this book inside of you, all that shouting and all that running and all that jumping means nothing to God. you got to get in this book right here. Listen to me. There are some things that you can count on in life, and I'm here to tell you about them. Number one, and you may not like it when I first start, you will have storms come your way. You're going to have small ones. 
You're going to have medium ones. You're going to have large storms. You're going to have ferocious storms. Maybe some of you going through an even storm tonight. You seem impossible to get through. Sometimes you'll face a storm of tornadoes, it seems, in your spiritual walk, or hurricanes, or typhoons. Listen, sometimes in our life, there's very ferocious storms that we face every single day. There's health storms you may be dealing with tonight. There's financial storms you may be dealing with tonight. There's relationship storms you may be dealing with tonight. There may be workplace storms that you're going through right now. There may be family storms that seem impossible to work its way out. There may even be church storms that you say, oh God, what are we going to do? Listen, storms will come, but I'm glad to know I know the peace speaker tonight and he can speak peace peace to the storms. Hallelujah. Your storms, you're going to have times of storms in your life. Storms will come suddenly. <laughs> one day sunshine, <laughs> one day then all of a sudden stormy the next day. One day life is going your way. You get up the next day, you can't seem to find your way along the way. One day your life is easy and free. Everything's going your way. Then the phone call comes. And just like that, your life is in a torrent of pain and despair. Storms come out of nowhere, it seems. When you least expect it, it seems that storms just keep coming every single day. Sometimes you see an approaching storm and you begin to prepare. And sometimes there it is, just storms will show up in your life. Listen to me, storms will come suddenly at times. As a child of God, Jesus will come to you and walk with you through the storms of life. I'm glad he promises. Listen to me, your life your flesh may seem battered and bruised because of all the torrential rains and storms. It may, may be broken because of the storms that you're facing. Your life, your flesh seems to be destroyed, yet you must understand. You can say, yet I know in my spirit is alive when I whisper the name of Jesus while I'm in the storms of my life. Get your focus, I know, get your focus on the peace speaker, not the troublemaker. <laughs> Listen, not on the winds and the waves and the torrents that seem impossible to get through. Get your focus on the peace speaker of your storms. The Lord will quiet your storms when he needs to quiet your storms. He will calm your storms when he needs to calm your storms. And honey, he will remove the storms in your life when he needs to remove the storms in your life. You must understand the Lord is in control of every single thing that comes your way. He is in control. You may not like it or enjoy the things you may be facing and dealing with in this room tonight. But listen, I can rest assured that through the storm, he walks with me, with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me that I am his own. Honey, you can know that by reading this book. Listen, you can count on it. You can count on Jesus to calm the storms of your life. You can count on him getting you to your destination that he wants you to get to through your storms that you're facing in your life. I'm telling you, I know you don't like to talk about storms and trouble and pain and heartache, but sometimes God is getting you to the place that where he wants you to be, and he's directing you through those times of storms in your life. Are you being tested tonight? Psalm 26, 2 says, examine me, O oh Lord, and prove me. <laughs> Try my reins and my heart. Psalm 139, 23 and 24 says, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way that's everlasting. Listen, this book 
can take you through any storm that you're facing. Tests demonstrates the test of life, demonstrates what you have learned. Until you've tested, until you're tested, you really don't know what you know and even what you don't know until you're tested by the test that God sends. Tests are opportunities to know your way to God. Tests are opportunities for you to become more mature in your walk with God. Let me, hear, let me tell you something, church. We've got too many people that come to church, get saved, and think it's going to be all right. Listen, you've got to mature in your walk and your relationship with the Lord. You must study and show yourself approved. You must be faithful to the cause. Stay, grow into, into the Lord and to maturity with Him. There are opportunities to know your potential with God. With God, all things are possible. When you get serious about your relationship and test that He sends your way, He's directing you in His walk with God. Remember, remember, a product cannot safely be used until it's gone through proper testing. Listen, the test is... And I'm going to give you some tests that you'll have to face to be able to be ready for the battle. Are you prepared for the battles you're going to face? The test of small things. Listen, God can't totally trust you with big things if he can't trust you with the small things in life. The small details that you must attend to. You must understand God can't trust you until you deal with those issues, those small things that keep you and hinder you and block you from his presence and his way. Maybe he sends the the motive test. We may be doing the right things, yet have the wrong motive behind them. Honey, check your motives when you're being tested from God. You see, the stewardship test. You can't give. Or help, listen, with your fist closed. You understand me? You can't give and you can't help with your fist closed. And I don't mean just money. Reach out a hand to somebody. Be a river, not a reservoir, with your time, with your devotion, with your will, with your heart with your thoughts, and even with your money. Be a re- don't be a reservoir. Give and give and give. Maybe it's the wilderness tests that the Lord sends your way. It reveals our ability to adapt to adversity and change. Listen to me. It proves we're able to perform our spiritual duties even when life isn't giving us a good deal. (laughs) The Lord may lead us, listen, He may lead us through the fires of life. He may lead us through heartache that we just can't seem we're never going to make another day. It may, he may lead us through the floods of things that's happening in our lives and situations. He may send us through sickness at times to get us to where we need to be. Sometimes he may send us through a desert spiritually to get us where he needs us to be. Sometimes he'll send us through times of discouragement and pain to direct us. Listen, the wilderness test is where we submit to short-term pain, having a confidence in the Lord that it will mean a long-term gain with Him. Listen, the man who was called the rock pusher, all he did was just be push rocks out of the way. He was called the rock pusher. At first it seems it was harder to do it, but the more he pushed those rocks and the more rocks he pushed, the stronger he became and the more resilient he became. Honey, let me tell you, sometimes the rocks of adversity may come our way and trouble, but honey, keep pushing forward. Keep pushing those things out of you because why? God is making a way for you. Maybe it's the credibility test. Nothing matters most. Nothing matters most than your confidence with God and your credibility before people. (laughs) Just imagine. Let me say that again. Nothing matters most than your confidence with God and then your credibility before people. Just imagine what the people really thought about Lot. Lot was who mocked his uncle Abraham, treated him selfishly, so he lost credibility with the people. Dear Lord, 
Don't let us lose our credibility in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let us lose our credibility in our talk, in our actions, in our friends that we have, in our enemies that we may associate with. Honey, don't let the enemy use that against you. Don't lose the credibility test that sometimes we have to take along life's journey. Maybe it's the authority test. You want to be a leader? Then learn to be a follower. <laughs> you want to lead? Learn to follow. We must learn to be submissive to what God's plan is for our lives. We must learn to submit to someone. We all must have a daily checkup of our spiritual walk and what God's plan is for our lives. We must all, every day, take a daily spiritual checkup. Examine your heart. Does it beat commitment to God? Does it beat service to the Lord? Does it beat dedication to our Lord Jesus Christ? Examine your eyes. Take the examination of the eye test. Do they see the possibilities of what God can do through you? Do they see the good in others and not the bad? Do they see the works of God instead of the works of man? Examine your eyes. Examine your ears. Do they hear of the goodness, of the greatness, of the grace of His love? Do they hear the positive and not the negative of what God is doing in your life? We all need a spiritual checkup every day of our lives. In Genesis 22, you find a great example of Abraham and Isaac. Abraham was a man who was battle tested. Just read the book. Sometimes when your faith is on trial, you need to get away from people. God told Abraham, take your son, your only son, to sacrifice him on one of the mountains. Abraham did not know exactly where he was going and why he was having to sacrifice his own son. But God led him because when you truly, when you truly walk with God, he directs your path and your steps. Listen, he will even clue you in on upcoming events in your life if you'll get close and walk with God and let him direct your steps. You can see things coming that you need to be aware of in your life. Abraham truly, truly trusted God. As I read the story over and over, I said, how in the world, Abraham, could you do it? Abraham truly Listen to what God was saying. The problem we have today is we're not listening to the Spirit of God. Understand, we're not listening to His Spirit. Listen, you see, He's not always in the wind that blows. He's not always in the fire that everyone can see. He's not always in the earthquake. It's sometimes it's his still, small voice that will speak to you. But are you too busy and too loud living in your own life that you can't listen and listen to his sm still, small voice? Listen. You can trust God on that still, small voice when it seems like you just need to get away and listen to what God wants you to do. It's always to trust that still, small voice of God. You say, Brother Gary, how can I ever hear that still, small voice? Honey, open up the pages of this book. Uh, how many times I've opened up the pages of this book and was facing a situation in my life. I just began to read it, and lo and behold, something would jump out from the Scriptures because he is still speaking through his precious Word. Listen to his still, small voice. Abraham didn't know exactly which mountain to head for, but that God said, you'll know it, when you see it. <laughs> Abraham saw the place. It says, Abraham saw the place in a distance. You see, church, 
There is a place in your test and trial that's closest to you that you can't seem to go. A place where true worship becomes a sacrifice that only you can go. You see, it's not really worship until you lay something down you value and give it to God. When you lay everything aside in your own life and say, Lord, I just want to worship you. All the clutter, all the clatter, all the voices, all the things, all the troubles, all the worries, all the fear. Listen, you've got to just cast that away and listen to God's still small voice because he's still speaking to us, church, if we'll just listen. Remember, Abraham said they would... <laughs> When he left, he told them they would come back. They would come back. When you get to the place where you can say, I don't know how, I don't know when, God will intervene. But when it's over, me and the lad, he said, I will we will come back. Then, listen, when you get to that place where you listen to his voice and know he's going to be with you, honey, then you've won the war, spiritually speaking, if you'll listen to his voice. Many times we don't understand the purpose of our tests and our trials and our battles and our skirmishes we must face. But God's proves himself over and over again that when the heat's on in your life, when your back seems to be against the wall, when you feel forsaken and all alone, when you just don't know what to do at times, when it's all hope seems lost, listen, when you're at the end of your rope, Honey, if you will still trust God, if you will still stay true to his call for your life, if you will still love him more than you've ever loved him before, if you will still be faithful to him, if you will still serve him every day, God will make a way for you. Listen to me. Battle testing times let you know, listen, Battle testing sometimes lets you know you're stronger than you think when you realize God's for you and not against you. Look at what God has already brought you through. Has anybody in this room been brought through something you thought impossible? Lift your hands up. Oh, God, those that didn't raise your hand, how are you living? Because I want to live the way you're living. <laughs> Look at what God has brought you through. Sometimes we're just afraid to admit somebody, I struggle. Honey, I want to be the first to raise this hand and then raise this hand, raise this foot, raise this foot, and jump. We all face trouble and heartache and pain. Look at the times he's brought you over. Look at where God has brought you from. You see, Isaac was not a little kid. Listen to this. Isaac was not a little kid. or He was a young man when he had to go up that mountain with Abraham. Yet, he walked beside Abraham. He submitted his life to him completely. He submitted his will and way to him. He submitted his trust to him. Listen, you're not a true worshiper just because you can sing. You're not a true worshiper just because you can shout and dance and run the aisles. You're not a true worshiper just because you can cry crocodile tears. Your tears. You're not just a true worshiper because you work in some type of ministry. You're not just a true worshiper if you volunteer in some kind of area. You're not a true worshiper if you teach a class or sing in the choir. But true worship is when you can say, have your your way, Lord, in my life. Do whatever you want in my life. I may not know all your plans for me, honey, but I'm going to trust your faithfulness, God, that you will see me through. That's when you prove that you're in a relationship with Almighty God. Just as Abraham tied Isaac to that altar, to, today maybe you seem to be all tied up, <laughs> maybe in that job that you really hate that school that you're in, those people who seem to irritate you at times, that relationship that you seem to have found yourself in, that family situation you seem to think that there's no answer or any hope or solution. You seem all tied up. 
God seems to be tying you down and holding you, so to speak. You say, why do I have to go through this? Why is this happening to me? Why me, Lord? But just as Abraham was raising the knife, Listen to me. God held his hand. Listen, when he bit it, he raised his hand with that knife. He passed the test. Listen to me. You've passed the test. You've proved your love for God. You're willing to serve me. You've gone all the way. And even though the test came, he remained faithful. And so can you. When the test come, remain faithful faithful. Abraham stood fast. Abraham trusted God. That's the purpose of the test in your life, honey. He wants to know, are you going to stand for him in the most difficult times of life? Are you going to stand for him in the most difficult days the church has ever faced? That's the purpose of the test that comes your way. Are you battle ready for the things that come? You see, God always, listen to me, God always has a plan. I said, God always has a plan. God always has a plan. He knew the plan when I was born in 1956. It seems like an age, ages ago. And honey, he knew the plans for you when you were born. He knows where we're at tonight. He knows where we're going tomorrow. And he knows where we're going in the future. God has a plan. We just need to follow that plan. He always does. You may not always see God's provisions coming, but honey, it's coming. You don't always understand the purpose or how he's going to undertake such an impossible situation, but honey, rest in the word of God. He is a faithful God, and he will see us through the storms and tests of life. Yet, when you get to where God wants you, his answers, listen to me, When God gets you, not the one sitting beside you, not your husband, not your wife, not anybody else in the church. Oh, he's preaching to so-and-so. They're up in Royal Rangers right now, goofing off. (laughs) I just made that up anyway. But uh, but listen to me. You are listen, you have to understand. You have to understand when you get to where God wants you in your walk with God, his assurances and his provisions are already waiting for you when you get there. No matter what your struggle, he's got provisions for you. No matter the test you're in right now, honey, he's already got the provisions for you when you pass the test. No matter the problems you are facing right now, honey, he's already got the answer waiting for you, but he's just waiting on you. No matter the situation, no matter the pain, no matter the heartache, no matter the confusion you might feel, no matter the worry you might fear, no matter the the fear that you're facing in your life. Honey, I'm here to tell you, God's got provisions for you. He's just waiting for you to get there. <laughs> the, word, the word said, listen to me, the word said, Abraham looked up and saw the ram caught in a bush. What's interesting in this story when he took his son up that mountain, What's interesting in this story is said that the rams don't normally climb that high. However, when God promises, I said when God promises, He can break every rule of nature. He can break every rule in the book to see that you are provided for when you need to be provided for. Just like that ram was at the right place at the right time, at the listen to me, and was caught there. He was waiting on Abraham. God will always, listen to me, they just have to, I, I just begin to shout when I begin to think about it. God will always, I begin to think about, God will always hold your provisions until you arrive at the place he wants you to be. He will always, he will always hold your provision. He's just waiting on us to get to there. Because, listen to me, he is still Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Are you battle tested? Are you weary? Are you worn? Are you built for the battles of life. Listen to me. Are you built for the things that we're going to be facing today? Listen to me, church. We must, we must prepare ourselves 
for the battles that we're going to have to face. Jesus is coming, and the devil's roaring like crazy in every kind of way known to man. Listen, you've got to be built for the battles that you're going to face in the days to come. Stand with me all across this building tonight. Are you built for the battles of life? Lord Jesus, I thank you for this church. I thank you for the faithful members of this church who trust you with their whole life and their whole being. I thank you for your precious word that I can open up every day and draw closer to you. I thank, I thank you, Lord, for the power of prayer that I can call upon you in every situation. At any moment, at any time, I'm thankful for the provisions you've given us. I thank you, Lord, because your grace is sufficient for every trial and every test known to man. Every, everything that you're going through is because of his grace and mercy. Hallelujah. Can you lift, lift your hands up tonight? Grace, grace, God's grace, all oh, grace that will pardon and cleanse with me. Sing it now, grace, grace, oh God. grace that is greater than all 